Hello and thanks for checking out this video on the new global illumination that comes with Cinema 4D R15. I'm going to show you a few of the new uh, GI methods. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to show you the R14 result and render time. So uh, I have an interior scene here from one of my tutorials and the uh, final result of the tutorial is this image and um, this renders at uh, 5 minutes 22 seconds. So we'll come back to this to compare the uh, quality of the GI. For now, let's go back to R15, of course, and let's go into the render settings. Now, you'll see uh, that the interface has changed. Um, we now have a, a primary and secondary method. Now, most of these options we already had in the uh, previous uh, GI iteration in R14, but uh, this is a uh, much nicer system. So. Basically, there are uh, two primary methods that you already know. So that's uh, Radiance Cache and the QMC render. And that's uh, similar to what we had before. But now instead of all those options, you have a few secondary methods. So th there's QMC and Radiance Cache again. Um, and then we have the radiosity maps that were also in R14. And we have the new light mapping. So you can mix and match, uh, not every combination makes a lot of sense, but uh, it's cool to be able to at least try it. And um, in some scenarios, even the, the strangest uh, combination might lead to proper results. So that's kind of the interface change we have here. Now, if you want to use what you're, if you want to work the way you're used to in R14, so just rendering a full irradiance cache, then you just set both the primary and secondary to irradiance cache and uh, any diffuse depth above two also uses the secondary method, uh, obviously. So there's not a third or fourth option there. And, um, well, the um, R14 render um, is set up like this as well. So I have the same uh, settings. I have the same uh, sample uh, accuracy, so medium settings. And um, I have the irradiance cache record density at low, which is also the same setting as in the other, um, well, it's a little bit adjusted, but it's, uh, it's very close. Of course, it's a new method, so it's always a little bit different. So let's render this and um, see what we end up with. So you'll see that uh, the render process looks different. Um, instead of those uh, red spots, uh, we're now immediately seeing some uh, really big pixels, basically. Uh, we're rendering this at a uh, resolution of uh, basically eight times the actual pixel size, and then we get the finer steps. So it's very similar to the previous uh, GI in that respect. Uh, it just looks a little bit different. And um, in my opinion, this is, is quite nice because especially with uh, uh, scenes that are not this heavy, this is an interior, so it's always going to be very heavy to render. Um, but with faster renders, you get a quicker idea of the illumination. So already here you can it up pretty well if you have a little bit of experience with these uh, uh, caches and how they look in their pre-pass. Alright, so this is the uh, last pass it's working on now and um, this is already a lot faster than the R15 render, uh, R14 render, sorry. So almost finished and um, if we go back to the R14 render that took 5 minutes 22 which was most of the time was um, um, the uh, GI cache. So if we now go to the R15 render, that's 1 minute 20 and it's already finished. Okay, so now it starts rendering. I'm using the physical renderer here. So uh, this is why you're only seeing one or two buckets. And let's speed this up. There we go. So uh, 3 minutes uh, 21 seconds. So uh, we saved 2 minutes over the previous uh, R14 render. So that's pretty pretty massive. And um, let's also have a look at the GI solutions. Now, remember, we use the medium accuracy and a low uh, record density, and we have an interior scene. Now, interiors do need very good GI solutions to really work properly. So this is kind of on the edge. Uh, you'll see some smaller artifacts, but um, it's a nice way to compare the quality of the GI solutions at these levels, because when you just set everything to max, then you'll automatically end up with a proper render, but then it's harder uh, to compare the quality. So let's uh, go back to R14, uh, and I'm just going to click and switch between them. 
And uh, first of all, let's have a look at this area, which is a very uh, tricky area uh, because there is a very uh, thin board there. And uh, in the R14 render, we're seeing some um, artifacts here and also some light leaks. So you're seeing some brighter spots here. If we go to R15, you're also seeing the artifacts. So because we have a similar accuracy, uh, so the amount of artifacts is sort of similar. But um, the light leaks are not really noticeable anymore, at least not uh, as prominent as in the previous uh, R14 render. Also, let's have a look at um, this area over here. So this cabinet is very close to the wall, but um, in the R14 render, you're seeing a, a clear gap between this. So it doesn't look really uh, connected to the wall. And in the R15 render, it's much better. So again, if you compare this, and that's usually an issue with, um, with these kind of cached solutions. They tend to blur your GI solution and you lose those very sharp shadows. Uh, similar for the TV, so in the R15 render, this looks quite nice, this soft shadow, and in the uh, new render, you, you can clearly see that it's blurred near the edges. So lots of improvements here. Um, when we look at the, the curtains, you'll see that it looks a little bit different, um, but both renders look quite all right. So. It's usually those, those smaller problem areas where you can really see the difference. So overall, uh, very good performance. Uh, the DGI prepress was about three times faster and uh, it just looks a little bit more detailed even. Of course, you can make the quality better if you want by increasing the accuracy and the uh, record density. But I think this, this works uh, pretty well and it's a, a good trade-off between quality and time. So that's your... Uh, primary uh, irradiance cache. Now let's have a look at uh, some of the other options. So I set up this light mapping um, render setting and basically it works like this. You have a uh, primary method. So again here I use the irradiance cache and then for all other bounces you have a light map. Now the light map sort of uh, uh, just computes uh, all the directions that light scatters and uh, once the primary uh, irradiance cache hits a spot on the wall, for example, it automatically knows I'm going to go in this and this and this direction, and then I'm going to end up with these results. So it's it's sort of um, almost caching the um, all the directions of the, the lights. So it's a very efficient way of um, computing multiple bounces. And um, especially because it's not really slowing down when you increase the depth. So we have a depth of 16, which is really huge. Um, but that's, that's all right for light mapping, so you can lower this if you want, but uh, it's not going to have a big effect on your render time. At the light mapping settings, um, you just have a path count, so the larger you make the path count, um, the more samples are used and the more accurate your light mapping solution will be. And you have the sample size, uh, which is uh, yeah, obviously the, the visible um, size of each light mapping sample. So. Those are the two main settings. And um, let me just hit render to show you what happens. And this light mapping is the very first step, even though it's a secondary method, so that might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but it's first computing all those uh, directions of the light. And uh, you can clearly see that uh, this is very fast. Uh, the quality is still improving a little bit. It's almost done. So there we go, about 20 seconds. And now the uh, irradiance cache only has to compute one depth and it's just using the information in the light cache. So it's, a very, it's very efficient uh, to do it that way, especially when you, need, when you really need those multiple bounces that are important for uh, an interior scene. So this is a lot faster now, the irradiance cache. Um, we're already almost done here. So this is the last step. And let's have a look. So we're a little above 50 seconds, and that's done. So about half a minute uh, faster. And now, of course, uh, let's speed up the render to uh, view the results. Here we go. This is almost finished. And 2 minutes 25. So again, we won about a minute. So uh, we both have a faster uh, GI pre-pass and then also faster render time because the uh, light mapping cache is a little bit easier to read. So let's compare the results. Well, because of those 
higher diffuse depths, uh, you'll see that the uh, sunlight is having a much bigger impact on the lighting because it's able to bounce around more realistically. So we end up with a more yellowish uh, tone. So obviously when you're working on a project, it's, it's good to decide which GI method you're going to use because the results will look a little bit different um, because of those higher diffuse depth effects. But uh, overall light mapping is of course more accurate, uh, more believable because it uses those um, depths that you have in reality with real light. So when we look at the uh, quality of the GI solution, it looks very similar. So if we look at uh, the TV or this sharper shadow here, uh, we didn't lose anything, any of that sharpness. And that's because we uh, have the, the primary radiance cache that's still the same. So that's computing all those harder shadows. And then when we look at this problem area over here, uh, you'll see that we have a similar amount of, of small artifacts uh, because of that uh, medium accuracy. So again, if you boost that up, you'll lose those. But um, overall, I think the light mapping solution looks a little bit more natural. Here, the shadows are quite dark uh, because of the lack of uh, diffuse depth. And uh, here they're very, very subtle. So much more, much more believable and lifelike. And um, well, similar when you look at the uh, curtains, for example, uh, in the previous version, we had a small uh, light leak over here. That's also gone. This is a nice uh, soft shadow. So overall, if we compare this light mapping method, 2 minutes 25, to the um, R14 result, it's a lot better, it's a lot faster. So a very, very uh, big improvement for people, especially who need detailed GI solutions. Um, if you have an exterior scene with, with quite simple GI, the previous version was always already uh, very good. But um, this will just speed those uh, harder renders up a lot. Right, so that's the basics. Um, I might do a, a more detailed uh, tutorial on the new GI if there's interest. So uh, please let me know in the comments. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and uh, please look forward to R15.